that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance to those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins at heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your great love, in your great love, answer me, O Lord. In your great love, in your great love, answer me, O Lord. It is for you. Yet 
death reigned over all from Adam to Moses. Even though their sin, unlike that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking the law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace, coming through the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle, 
and they were truly the saints of God. Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for about 20 years. Her husband, he was incurably crippled, and he went to work every day propelling himself on his wheelchair. Despite their afflictions, they lived happy lives, bringing bright inspiration and comfort to those who knew them. Things didn't get them down. One day the Martins were visiting the Doodles, and Dr. Martin commented on this bright hopefulness and asked them the secret. And Mrs. Doolittle replied, it was very simple. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. The beauty of that simple expression of deep faith gripped the hearts and fired the imagination of Sibyl and Mark. The outcome of that inspiration was the hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow. And what a powerful song it became. It was an African-American singer and actress of the mid-20th century, Ethel Waters. She used the title, His Eye is on the Sparrow, for her autobiography. What a life she had, on stage recording, going on freedom marches, and frequently accompanying the evangelist Dr. Billy Graham. His eye is on the sparrow, and when sung by another black African-American, the singer who is known as the Queen of the Gospel, Mahalia Jackson, the record company, Columbia, she went on to have, wait for it, a dozen golden discs. Now, a golden disc, I think, I mean, is a million. Twelve million hits of his eyes on the sparrow. There was and there is a demand for powerful music, for any powerful expression of the love of God. His eyes on the sparrow, yes, and even on you and me. When Jesus used that arresting illustration, he was encouraging all who would be his disciples at that particular time, the first twelve who were to be engaged in proclaiming the justice and peace of the rule of God. All who are called to discipleship, whether the first four, the first twelve, the seventy, or the thousands, now all the millions who are baptized are caught up in the mission. And it brings, or should bring us, the powerful urge to bring the message of God's caring love to all of mankind. This will frequently cause divisions, and even within families and nations. And that's what we find written in the gospel context of this teaching. There will be difficult times, oppression, Danger. People will be dragged before the courts. We can recall it in our lifetimes. Jesus says, do not be afraid of these things. There is a long history of persecution. Of Christians, of Jews, of Catholics, of black people, of enslavement, persecution of Protestants. We ghastly, selfish, and powerful drive to power and domination that lurks in us all demeans our true humanity. We are born for life in all its fullness, and each of us is surely aware that we are gifted that others may share tender freedom, family life, and personal dignity. So for the black gospel singers like Ethel Waters and Mahalia Jackson and others, it was natural for them to support the civil rights marches in Selma, Montgomery, Washington in their time in the mid-1960s. There was a gospel message to be proclaimed. 
that everyone is free and equal in the sight of God. His eyes are on the sparrows, on those who are small, those considered of little value. Everyone is equally valuable in the sight of God. That continues, does it not? All life matters, from first beginning to the final program. So today the gospel message for this Mass proclaims a universal song. Each of us is called to sing the Lord's song. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come, come Lord Jesus, come. At Holy Mass, the Lord Jesus truly and really comes to us in word and in sacrament. He comes to encourage, to strengthen, to nourish, to be embodied in us so that we may be his active living presence in the world. That we are cherished by God, every aspect of us known to him is the source of our real power to make a difference, being the means by which poverty, disease, discrimination and violence will no longer be acceptable as each of us contributes to the common good. Catholics for change, showing that all life matters, so that heaven will truly be found on earth and that each of us will now and in the end find that heavenly happiness which is eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father of the world ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God of the Lord, 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 For our sake, we shall strive for the promised life. We shall be dead in the day and grow together on the third day of the promise of the Spirit. He has sent it into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I can trust one who possess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord. In confidence we pray to the Father. We pray for the Church, the sacrament for the healing of nations, that Pope Francis may proclaim a message of universal justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for vocations to the ministry of the Church, particularly for our seminarians, Christopher, Malachi and Aidan and others preparing for ordination. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We pray for all involved in education, for teachers and parents, for pupils, and those who are planning for return to schools. Lord, hear us. Lord, please hear us. We continue to pray for those working in the health services and for those who through illness have called on our prayers and particularly praying for the bereaved. 
Lord, heal us. Lord, pray us. We remember our dead, praying for the recently departed and those who have anniversaries at this time. Lord, heal us. Lord, pray us. You can take a moment for our personal prayer.
these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Hugh, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, Steve and Arlene, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying your homage to you, the eternal God, living and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph as fathers, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Titus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Protogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, all your sins. We ask that through the merits and prayers and all things we be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the salvation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. In peace with God, we pray, the blessed knowledge and approve. This offering is made spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his most holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. Yeah, this 
designed to do the divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of the Son, and be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sea of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant masses, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your favorites. Admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your power through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them and fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor to yours forever and ever. Amen. At the same command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we give us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, beside you, and mine beside you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Love of God, you take away. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
renewed and nourished by the sacred body and fresh blood of the Son, we ask from your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please take a seat. Um, there will not be a second collection tonight. And uh, just to, to um, advise you about uh, the procedures to come, uh, thank you for those who came in and cleaned, thoroughly cleaned the church on Saturday morning. It was very well done. Uh, the church was smelling of disinfectant. Uh, areas are taped off and seating places have been allocated. There are not many um, and uh, the church will be open briefly on Wednesday evening from 5.30 to 6.30 and on Friday from 12.30 to 1.30 and uh, that will be the pattern until anything else is announced or published. Uh, we have to keep uh, safety restrictions and distancing. This uh, pandemic is not yet over, so take care, look after each other and keep the appropriate distances. It's marvelous that we can all be in touch in this way and I'm very heartened by your responses to me by telephone, email, whatever, note, letter, and uh, thank you for keeping up the financial contributions. They are so very necessary. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Let's go. Sweet Lord Jesus. Thank you.